Listen, Reverend Nancy led us in the reading and hearing of the contextual environment, Ephesians 5, 1 through 7. We're going to read aloud Ephesians 5, just 1 and 2 from the New King James Version. I will talk about Yoli uh, verses 3 through 7 in the um, preaching of the message on today. But let's listen to verses 1 and 2. Let's begin reading. Therefore... Be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Beloved, this morning... We are, Lee, continuing our series that we began last week and uh, Deacon Liz, uh, a series that I think, Joe, I'm going to be involved in for quite some time. And Nicole, uh, Daryl, the series that I started last week is entitled The Walk of the Believer. Let the whole church say the walk of the believer and this morning today brother and sister deacons we come to consider the walk that you and i are called to the walk that you and I are engaged in, the walk, Vanessa, that you and I are involved in and with more how shall I say it, specificity, I want to look today at this component, uh, McQuinta, of this walk that Paul calls us to. And we realize and recognize today that Paul puts emphasis on the fact that the walk you and I have been called to is a walk of love. Now, 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 brothers and sisters, if you and I stop to think about it, uh, that is a, a natural, Shavanda, that's a natural place for us to start. Uh, last week, uh, I talked about uh, introducing Jimmy Pop James. I introduced this series by looking at the most famous walker in the world, a man by the name of Enoch. Bible says, y'all forgot that quick, but Bible says that Enoch walked with God. And when it was time for him to make his transition, that he was not, for God took him. And, and Lee, I argued, I argued last week that uh, you and I may not do any great thing, but the greatest thing we can do is walk with God. Okay, I'm going to try that one more time, Deacon. Uh, you and I may not do any great thing. We, we may not uh, make a great marks in the world. We may not be known for some great uh, event or some great occurrence or some great accomplishment. Our names may never be recorded or written in the annals of history. But hey, y'all, if it can be said of you that you walk with God, that's worth living your life for. And Enoch, uh, I, I don't know how I'll say it, Angie, and Enoch walked with God. And when it was time for him to be transitioned, he was not, for God took him. So, so last week, uh, Brother Chairman, Brother Vice Chairman, I introduced this series with a general overall introduction using Enoch as our example for the walk of the believer. Now today, I start rolling it out. Looking every week at another aspect, another element, another component, as it were, of the nature of our walk. And today, we start with the fact that ours is a walk of love. Now, let me say it one more time, in case you didn't get it. That is a natural place for us to start. And here's why. 
Because God is love. <laughs> In fact, beloved, in fact, I would argue, I would suggest, I would surmise that if you were to ask almost anyone, whether they are a believer or not, whether they are a Christian or not, whether they are a follower of Christ or not, if you were to ask almost anybody, what is God like? What is the nature of God? I think most everyone would answer, God is love. Reason why I say that, I don't have empirical evidence for that, but I do have anecdotal total evidence for that. Uh, uh, Uncle George, here's why. Because the most famous verse in the Bible is John 3.16. I mean, your cousin Clem. <laughs> I hope you don't have a cousin Clem because I ain't talking about it. Your cousin Clem on his drunkest day. Come on, y'all. Well, no, he be bobbing and weaving. <laughs> and he could quote John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. Anybody, doesn't matter whether they say it or not, if you would ask them, what is God like? Most of them, the majority, the overwhelming majority would answer, God is love. Amen. Now, let me stop. Let me stop right there, Deacon Dee Dee. Um, I am aware, because I know y'all sitting there saying, now, he's awful excited about that, but I don't agree with it, so let me help you. <laughs> I am aware there are those um, who see God as this mean, vindictive, almost ogre-like divinity. I realize that. I, I know there's some folk who think nothing good about God. I, I'm, I'm not saying folk like that don't exist. I am saying the overwhelming majority of people have a positive view of God. And when asked, what is God like? Based on their knowing John 3, 16, most would answer, God is love. Now, beloved, that, that reality uh, ought to help us, ought to make us glad. Because it means our job is a little bit easier when it comes to witnessing to unbelievers about God. Because if people are kindly predisposed toward God, if people have a positive view of God, then when we start, Daryl, talking to them about God, we don't have to work as hard because they already have a good view of God. Now, that's the positive side. Can I tell you the negative side of that? That if folk believe God is love and they know John 3, 16, and they can quote it even when they high. <laughs> Come on, don't, don't, don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Because folk my age, folk my age, uh, you know, you, you had a daddy maybe or an uncle who wasn't saved. And they go out partying on Saturday night. And they come back in on Sunday morning drunk as they could be. Three, five, seven shades in the wind. And then they turn on the record player. See, that shows you got to be old. They turn on the record player. 33 and a half black wax. 
with a handle and a needle and a nickel on the needle so it wouldn't skip. Where's my help? <laughs> and he, 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 he got in 2 o'clock in the morning, drunk as he could be, and he put on Mahalia Jackson. <laughs> now, he wasn't going to church, Angie, but he had church there on the Victrola, or, 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 on the record player, because even when they weren't saved, they had a view of God that was high and exalted. I wish I had a church up in here today. And because of that, because of that, it makes our job of witnessing a little bit easier. But the flip side of that is, if folk really do, my Mary, believe that God is love, and they know John 3, 16, and they can quote it even when they are inebriated, then guess what? That puts an onus on us because if we claim to know God, Ricky, they expect us to act like God and be loving as well. I set y'all up like bowling pins. Y'all didn't see that coming. Because y'all, yeah, John 3, 16, yeah, God is love. Well, yeah, God is love. But if I'm a child of God and I'm a daughter of God and a son of God and a servant of God, then Yvonne, when I show up, I ought to bring God into the room and my default setting ought to be love. God, I feel like preaching up here. Where are my folk in the back? Y'all told me you were going to help me preach. If the world knows God is love, then, then watch this, Gene. Then the world is looking at us, checking us out, scoping us out. To see whether or not that love is manifested on display in our lives. God, I feel like preaching this today. Jesus said, my Aaron, by this will all people know that you are my disciples, not by your gifts. Not by your anointing, not by your ability, not by your authority, not by your articulation, not even by your spiritual gifting, but because you love one another. That's the acid test of our walk with God. So, 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 John Callaman, so if, if everybody knows God is a God of love and that's their image of God, yes, okay, you're fine. We need a nurse or someone to help this brother out. Just Kim is coming and Rocky is coming. Everybody else, watch me. Y'all know how we do it, right? We pray and watch. We're going to trust God, touch that brother. Amen. And uh, we're going to believe God's moving in his life. And we're going to trust God every step of the way. Amen. All right. So watch this. Stay. Everybody looking at me? So if the world knows God is a God of love, then you and I have the onus, the responsibility to do what? Walk in love. Now, here's the wrinkle in the chitlin. Here's the challenge. Everybody ain't easy to love. <laughs> hey, Nicole, I done set y'all up again like bowling pins. I'm about to bowl a strike. Everybody, listen, we are called to love. But everyone is not easy to love. Come on, talk back to me. And since everyone is not easy to love, the question we have to raise right now is, God, how do I love folk even when they are difficult to love? And that's what Paul says in our text. Are y'all still with me? Paul says in our text, be therefore imitators of God as dear children and do what? Verse 2, and walk in love. Now, how do I do that? How do I walk in love? 
when some of the folk on my job just downright unlovable look straight at me. How do I walk in love when some folk, some folk in my family are cantankerous <laughs> and they hard to love? Can I go one more? How do I walk in love when folk at first church sometimes? I took off my glasses so I can't see how y'all looking at me. Come on, come on. It, it ain't just at work. It ain't just at the Christmas family dinner. But I mean, y'all know, sometimes you roll up in here and run into some spirits, lowercase s, not capital S, some spirits that rub you the wrong way. Come on, I wish I had church up in here. And even when somebody looks at me wrong or mean mugs me or act like they don't want me to sit next because they got their coat on one chair, their pocketbook on a... Two to the left and two to the right which is they, they got the Bible on the other and the iPad on the other, which is their way of saying, don't think about it. <laughs> don't even think, of, I'm not turning to my neighbor because there won't be no neighbors next to me. <laughs> How do I roll up in here? <laughs> And love folk like that. <laughs> not just on my job, not just in my family, but some folk right up here in the grand old first church of God who are not easy to love. Well, I'm going to take the next 20 minutes and answer that question for you. <laughs> because, because, because all of us this week are going to run in to some unlovable folk. Whoa. All of y'all gonna encounter somebody, maybe in the parking lot, <laughs> maybe in the North X, <laughs> who, uh, who, <laughs> child, will challenge your walk with God in ways you never imagined possible. But we are called, the text says, to be imitators of God and walk in love. Kenny, it's not an option. It is an imperative. Be ye therefore imitators of God. Did you notice, Lee, as dear children, like children imitate their daddy and their mama, you and I imitate our heavenly father and the all oh God and the way we imitate him is by walking in what John 3.16 says about him, that he is love. Are you in the room with me? How do you do it? Next 19 minutes and 27 seconds, here's the answer. First of all, you and I can walk in love even with unlovable people because of our experience. Let me show you what I mean, deacons. Listen to what Paul says. Walk in love as Christ has loved you. Let me try. Erica, did you get it? Sister Maureen Black by Jeff Woods. Sister Mary Green, did y'all get Elder Snell? Watch this. Walk in love. Thank God he doesn't just stop there. Now you're on your own. Walk in love. Do the best you can. <laughs> Period. Walk in love. Period. Walk in love. Exclamation point. No. Walk in love as to the degree, same way, Christ has loved you. Yeah. Rem Nancy, that's it right there. That's it, beloved. We can love, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Shavonda, we can love because we have been loved. Yeah. I'm waiting for the folk in Second Church to say amen. Angie, I can love even unlovable people because I have been been loved. And watch this, y'all. It gets gooder. I have been loved in the best way by the best. By God himself. 
Tammy, that somebody else ought to be shouting besides Tammy. No, see, I can love because I have been loved. And watch this. I have been loved, Kevin, in the best way. By the best. I haven't been loved like some folk love, some timey, quid pro quo. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Long as you healthy, I love you. Long as you paying the bill, I love you. Long as you buying lunch, I love you. Why y'all getting quiet? Say amen, else folk gonna think I'm talking about you. As long as you doing what I want, I love you. But the minute you get sick, and the minute you get unemployed, and the minute you can't, flee, you know, always cover all the expenses, then child, I go find somebody else to love. No, aren't you glad we have a God who loves us irrespective of our condition or our situation? In the words of Dr. Charles Edward Booth, our situation. We love, we love. How do I love unlovable folk, Elder Williams? How do I love unlovable folk? Well, the first way I can do it is because of my experience. I have been loved. Whoo! And I've been loved in the best way. Would you write it down? And I've been loved by the best. I told y'all that story, um, I believe it's J.I. Packer, J.I. Packer, P-A-C-K-E-R, in his book, Knowing God. It is, it's Packer, in his book, Knowing God. Uh, uh, Bruce Packer, P Packer tells the story, you've heard me tell it before y'all moved away. Uh, Packer tells the story of a colleague of his who was a professor who was tenured but was done wrong by the faculty. And they manipulated and found a way that in spite of his tenure to get him out of his teaching position. And Packer went to see him, and he was boxing up the books in his office. And Dr. Packer said, oh, man, I'm so sorry. What they did to you was wrong. I fought for you in the faculty meeting, and I, I told them we shouldn't. And, and the man just kept packing his books and what have you. And Packer, look, he said, it was terrible what they did to you, and I know you're upset. And the man said, oh, no, uh, James, I think his name is James I. Packer. He said, no, I'm not upset at all. He said, what do you mean you're not upset? You, you're a tenured professor. They had no right to do that. And, and he, was, he, said, he said, just stop. He said, I'm all right. He said, how can you be all right? Listen to what he said, Vanessa. He said, because I know God and they don't. <laughs> Mike, I know God and they don't. It's all right what they do. I'm not going to let what they do disturb me and rob me of my joy and my peace and my country. I know God. Do I have anybody in the room or online who can holler? I know God. And because I know God, I can face whatever life brings my way. I know God, Packer, and they don't. That's why they do what they do, DP, because they don't know God. And Smitty, that's why I can take it, because I know God. I know God. That's how you can love folk, because God's loved you. Are you in the room with me? Write these three things down, A, B, and C. Everybody say, I've, I've known love. Come on, say, I've known love. Say, God loves me. Here's A, we've had God's love poured out on us. I love that word, poor. I was going to use another word, Liz, but I decided to go with poor because I saw an image of a pitcher of Kool-Aid. <laughs> okay, I'm old. Kool-Aid. And, and it poured, being poured out. We've had love poured out on us. Because of that, we've been made their partakers of his love. We, because after the, after the Kool-Aid's poured out in the glass, we get to drink it. I'm just taking my little Kool-Aid illustration as far as I can. And then we've, we've seen his love proven in our lives over and over, over again. Haven't we? Okay, I'm not going to let you play God like that. I said, haven't we? Haven't we seen God prove his love to us over and over and over again? 
Well, here's the second thing. We can love people even when they're unlovably um, because of our experience. But, but then here, we can walk in love. We can love people based on our example. Let the whole church say example. Everybody online, type in example. L listen to what Paul says. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us. Here it is. And given himself for us. Wow. Their beloved is the example of love. Christ, hallelujah. Wow. Wow. I think, my Mary, there sometimes we, we ought to say some things with more reverence. Listen to what I'm about to say. And maybe it'll touch you like it's touching me. Christ became an offering and sacrifice for us. I, Tanya, I can love people because of the example that I have in Christ loving me. He gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice for my jacked up self. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all get on my nerves. No, like I'm the only jacked up person up in this room. He gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice for every last one of us with our jacked up self. Don't you sit there because you got on a suit like you haven't been jacked up. Tore up from the floor up a hot sizzling mess. Nothing in us that deserves it, that's worthy of it. But he looked beyond our fault and met every one of our needs. Would you just holler, that's why I love him. No, somebody else holler, that's why I love him. Because I didn't deserve it. I was not worthy of it. But he became an offering. Hallelujah. A sacrifice for us. Write these three words down. A, B, and C, A. How did he do it, Vanessa? Bill, glad you asked. He, he did it as the payment. That's where those two terms, offering and sacrifice, they sound, they sound the same, but they're different. Most scholars agree that the term offer, are y'all with me still? The word offering has to do with his whole life. His whole life was an offering. His coming, condescending, coming through 42 general. okay. I'm trying to teach and preach and y'all just sitting there. His whole life being born of a virgin, divesting himself of where he was, leaving glory where angels worshipped him and adored him and coming down to a sin-cursed world. His whole life was an offering. But his sacrifice, Kevin, was what he did on the cross when he gave his body and his life to be mutilated and hung on a cross. He became my offering, my sacrifice, the payment, the payment for a debt I could not pay. Then his be in our place. Not just as the payment, but as the payment in our place, which means uh, substitute. You know, you learn something new every day. Everybody say, you learn something new every day. I've been preaching, pretty near, John, I've been preaching pretty near 50 years, 50 years. In fact, next year will be my 50th anniversary of preaching. I've been preaching a long time. <laughs> long time. I've been with the company a long time. And I was reading, researching this sermon, and I came across, in, in, in a commentary I had never read before, I came across this line where, where it talks about in our place. He was defining and describing it. And he said a better sense of that word is in our room. Now that made me stop, in our room. 
in our room. And, he, and then he went on to explain. He said, think about it. This is old times now for hospitals were prevalent. You, you died, you were born at home and you died at home. And when you were really sick unto death, they would say two things. You're on your deathbed and in your dying room. And, and this scholar says that in my place really means that Jesus died in my room. The room I should have, oh God, the room I should have died in. What should have been my room of death, my dying room, he entered it and died in my place. That deserves more than a patty cake. Somebody holly in my room. And then here's, here's see, for our pardon. For our pardon. For our pardon. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Y'all don't know old songs. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There, my burden so <laughs> found liberty at Calvary. Mercy there was great. Grace was free. Thank God he didn't charge me for it because I would have gone bankrupt trying to do it. Pardon there was multiplied to me. And there, my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. See, I can love you. I don't care how you act. Because I've experienced love. And I have an example of love that sacrificed his life, became my substitute to satisfy the righteous anger of God for my part. Well, here's a third one, and we close. I have 11 minutes and 14 seconds. We can walk in love not only because of our example in Christ, our experience of the love of Christ. We can walk in love. Now, Daryl and Nicole, this is where I'm going to get any amens, but I'm old. I done preached long enough now. I can close it without amens. We can walk in love, thank you, Pop, by our expression. Look at verses 3 through 6. Paul, Lord have mercy, goes on in such graphic, vivid detail to talk about what a life of love looks like. And he contrasts it with what a life of sin is like. Okay, 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 okay. And, and simply and succinctly put, the life of love that you and I are called to live is in sharp, contrast to the world we don't live like the world I, I feel Elder J.C. Wilbur right about here we don't live like the world uh, we, we are what them old saints call come outers Rev. Nan Rev. Sister Rodell we are come outers come out from among them and be ye separate be clean. Come on, y'all getting quiet. Up. DP, that's what they taught. 116 South Wayne. You got to come out from among the world. Come out from among lasciviousness. Come out from lewdness. Come out from corruption. Come out from evil. What? It's getting quieter and quieter. But I told y'all, I'm going to preach without amen. You can't walk in love and not come out. He says, this is what Christ has done in verses 2 and 3, or verses 1 and 2. But in verses 3 through 6, he says, now this is what we do in light of what he's done. Here it is. A, every point I'm going to lose somebody. We do not live a sensual life. We don't live our lives for the flesh, appeasing it, appealing to it, giving in to it. We don't live our lives sensually for the, for the flesh. Let me say this, and I'm going to get in trouble. And that's more than sex. 
Because some of y'all think the only sensual nature is sex. Child, listen, you can love things and that'll be sensual. Sensual has to do with your five senses, which comprises the makeup of your flesh. We don't live for the gratification of the flesh. Paul says, I stay under my body, I bring it into subjection, lest after I preach to others, I myself should be disqualified. I die daily. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies your socks, your flesh, your body, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to this world, but you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We don't live a sensual life. Here's B, we do not live a selfish life. Sensual is living for the flesh. Selfish is living for ourselves. Helen, Helen, let me tell you something. You can't be a Christian and be selfish. Oh, God, I done lost everybody now. Lord, I thought the deacons would stick with me. No, no, you can't. I can't be a Christian and only think about myself, Bob Brown, and only want for myself and only care about myself and only focus Deacon Skelton on myself. If I am a Christian, isn't it Paul in Philippians said we don't just look on our own things, but we look on the things of others. I'm going to get in trouble, but I think I can backstroke my way out of it. That's what we saw in that debacle in Washington, D.C. this week in the House chamber. A bunch of selfish people who only think about themselves, who want nothing but power for themselves and position for themselves. And my God, what a tragedy that our nation is being led by such selfish people. It is not about us. It's about others as well as ourselves. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, show somebody they're traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. God give us public servants who just don't want to feed at the trough of the public's money and not think about the poor, the last, the least, the lowest, the hurting, the old, the infirmed, and the homeless. You and I can't be a Christian. I don't care how big a Bible they carry. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not judging anyone's walk with God, but I can be a fruit inspector. And when I watch the fruit of your life, and I watch your vote, your votes are fruit. Unless you think I'm only talking about the people who have an R behind their name. Let me say to those of us who have a D behind our name, we got to watch our votes too that tear down the family and tear down morality and rob us of our Judeo-Christian ethic because we want to please everybody. Preach, Claude, doing the best I can with a hostile crowd everywhere. You can't be, I can't be selfish and be saved. I cannot walk in love and be selfish. DP, I can't do it. I can't see homeless people and be indifferent. I can't see the elderly like what happened at Sawyer Towers. Deacon Priscilla and not care about it. 
Deacon Jackie, I can't know that this is the highest rate for infant mortality here in this zip code while we shouting and hollering and screaming and not care and have a mother's cove that will help them navigate what it is to bring up healthy children so they get to see their first year of life. I wish I had a church now. See, y'all just want to holler and scream. It is our responsibility to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth and to do good every time we get an opportunity. We got to stop telling girls, don't, don't have an abortion. Walk around showing pictures of an aborted fetus, but then you vote against every bill that provides milk and health care for children and denies people the right to have substance. You can't have it both ways. That's selfish. And Michelle, I'm pretty afraid a lot of them folk up there with them big Bibles aren't Christians. Because it isn't what you say only, it's what you do. Well, let me close. I have two minutes and 24 seconds. We do not live a sensual life. We do not live a selfish life. But you know what we do? We live a separated life. We don't live for the flesh. We don't live for ourselves. But get, you know what we do? Adrian, we live for the Savior. <laughs> Glory to God. Bill, we live for the Savior. We live to please him. We live to honor him. We live to serve him. We live to make his name famous. We live so that others are drawn to him. We don't live for our selfish desire. We don't live for the satiating of our flesh and the satisfying of our flesh. No, we live for the glory of God, for our Savior who went up on a hill called Calvary and gave his life life so that we could be saved and now that we are saved we ought not just sit back smug and content because we're saved no we ought to have a burden to help somebody else find the Jesus that we know would you look at a neighbor say neighbor I'm wondering today uh, do you care if anybody goes to heaven uh, beside you uh, are you satisfied that you're saved uh, and your children are saved and your spouse is saved but do you have a yearning I feel like preaching now and a burning in your soul to see other folks snatched from the fire of hell do you have a desire to see somebody else bow their knees before the eternal God of heaven and cry out Lord what must I do to be saved do you have have a desire to see a young person find Jesus and change the trajectory of their lives? Do you have a desire to see an older person find Jesus and die knowing that I'm on my way to heaven? Is there anybody here? I feel like preaching who says, I know I'm saved, but I want to rescue the perishing. I want to care for the dying. I want to tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Would you turn to one of your neighbors and say, neighbor, we have work to do. It's the eighth day of the year. The harvest is right. The fields are ready. There are souls to be saved. We have work to do. But you can't rescue them if you don't love them. You can't rescue them if you don't care about them. You can't rescue them if you're looking down your nose like you're better than them. But if you remember where you were when Jesus found you and the shape you were in when he saved you. Is there anybody here who can shout
out with me. I remember the day, I remember the hour when the Lord saved me by his mighty power. And if he can save me, he can save anybody. So go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ isn't just born, but he lived and he died and he was buried and he rose again and he ascended and he's sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high and one day I feel like preaching he's going to crack the sky every eye shall see him every knee shall bow every tongue confess that Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christos is Lord Adonai to the glory of God the Father I got to go y'all but I'm feeling some Donnie McClurkin living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away he justified freed me forever and someday someday I feel mother Malone right now some glad morning when this life is over what you gonna do I'll fly Would you turn, turn, turn to one of your neighbors, say neighbor, I'm living this life to live again, but I don't want to go to heaven by myself. I want to look behind me and see somebody in the kingdom because I told them there's a savior who loves you died for you thank you Lord for saving my soul thank you Lord for making me whole thank you Lord for giving to me thy great salvation so full so free can you jump up on your feet online jump up in your room and holler thank you Lord for saving my soul thank you Lord for washing me, forgiving me, cleansing me. Thank you. is omnipotent that you can't deny a God of love and miracles it's written in the sky it took a miracle to hang the stars in place it took a miracle to put the moon in place but when he saved my soul cleansed and made me whole I promise you that took a miracle of love and grace and if he did it for you and I, we ought to want him to do it for us, for others. That's, that's what it is to walk in love. How do I love folk? They ain't lovable. Not easy to love. Oh, easy. Because you've experienced it. As Christ loved us. You can do it because of his example. He gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice. And then you can do it, watch this, by your expression every day. By not living selfish, sensually, but living 
for the Savior. A separated life. Come on, would you give God praise? Me home.